Path of Exile 2 Early Access has been out for nearly two months and there are many posts about the game crashing, people's PC freezing or even turning itself off. In this video I will go over some basic solutions that revolve around software that you can try yourself. I won't go too in depth on any hardware related topics because this would make the video a bit too long and complicated. But if you build your desktop PC, I'm guessing you know what to look out for. If you don't feel comfortable working with PC hardware or even updating your BIOS, you might have to go to a PC specialist or technician. Maybe even the greatest technician that's ever lived. If you expect a solution in less than a minute, I have to be honest, that won't happen here. Please take the next 30 minutes to troubleshoot and read whatever I show on screen or whatever pops up on your own screen. Do not see this video as an any percent Super Metroid speedrun. This video is here to teach you to help yourself with your own device. One last thing, I want to thank a mod in the PC gaming Discord server for their help on my PC and with the script of this very video. The server also has a handy dandy list of troubleshooting steps that you can follow if videos aren't your thing. With this out of the way, keep your eyes and ears open and let's get into it. At this point in the video, I expect that you checked your hardware before we continue. I know this can be annoying, but make sure your CPU, GPU and motherboard cables are fully seated. Same goes for your RAM and your SATA cables. If your fans have more dust than what I have behind my TV, it's really time to clean them carefully by holding down the blades and blowing some compressed air on them. Additionally, you can clean them further by using a paper towel, ear tips and 99% isopropyl alcohol. Moving on to software. I love it. You can always go back a few steps or worst case, you just reset it all and start fresh. Can't really do that if you broke your CPU socket. Across Reddit and the forum, I read the following three major issues that plague Path of Exile 2 players. Game crashes, PC freezes and the good old black screen. Let's slowly go step by step. The game crashing can come from a lot. Plain and simple, maybe the game has bugs that cause crashes. It happens and we can't do anything right now. We have to wait for updates from the developer Grinding Gear Games. Even on my brand new machine, I had many crashes in the first month. It just happens. No! It, it crashed! <laughs> what we can do is keeping our system up to date from the ground up. Starting off with the BIOS. It is crucial to your system and can genuinely cause issues if it's too outdated. I had many blue screens of death a few years ago while playing Path of Exile 1 because my BIOS was over 4 years old. It's time to get the latest BIOS version which you can easily get from your motherboard manufacturer. First, for pre-built PCs like Corsair, NCXT, Dell, HP and so on, check your PC builder's website or contact their support. Second, for custom PCs, you can easily find out about your motherboard by clicking the Windows symbol, then searching for system information and looking for baseboard product. Third, now with your motherboard name, go to the manufacturer's website and simply follow the guide on how to update your motherboard BIOS. Usually they have quite handy PDFs that you can download and follow. If you are unsure, the PC gaming Discord server most likely has your back. One thing I want to make clear here before doing a BIOS update, I recommend saving the profile that is currently set up because all your settings are going to get reset. This includes your fan curves as well as your RAM speed and CPU overclock settings. Speaking of CPU, 
Intel 13 and 14 CPUs had catastrophic issues when old profiles were reapplied. So don't do that. Now I recommend booting back into Windows and doing some hardcore gaming. Play Path of Exile 2 for some period of time. If the game crashed every 10 minutes, then play for at least that amount of time to see if your issue has been solved. Pause this video while you do those steps. Best case scenario, you have troubleshooted your PC issue and have solved it. Congratulations! But if the game is still crashing frequently, we have to go a step further. Next up are chipset and CPU drivers, which you can find on your manufacturer's website. For me, it's Asus. If you want to be on the bleeding edge of updates, I would go to AMD's or Intel's website instead. Chipset and CPU drivers come in one download. Read how your manufacturer does it, but in general, just download the chipset driver option and why not also get the USB, LAN and wireless updates. After doing all those updates, play the game a bit more. If it seems stable, you can and should go back to your BIOS and enable the RAM profile called XMP, DOCP or Expo depending on your board. Afterwards, try to play a bit more again and if it's still stable, sweet! If there are still issues, you can revert back the RAM profile or try a lower frequency in megahertz. After this, it's time to move on to the next section. Before updating more things, let's check if your PC is overheating. We need hardware info from the link in the description. It's an amazing tool that lets us see all the different sensors and their readings. Download it, extract or unpack it, run hardwareinfo64.exe for a 64-bit operating system, leave the sensors only option on and click start. After a few seconds you can scroll up and down the list to see all the sensors. If any of them light up in a dangerous red color, either right now or while you're playing for a few minutes, that's the major issue. Something is clearly not right and you will have to figure out what exactly the issue is. For me, my GPU hotspot was red. It reached up to 105 degrees Celsius in Horizon Forbidden West. This had nothing to do with the game and everything to do with the hardware itself. After bringing it to a PC technician, they figured out that the thermal paste was badly applied. On my $1700 GPU. Thanks Asus. It's alright. Mistakes happen. I got it back, tested it and the GPU hotspot temps were about 20 degrees Celsius lower. I noticed a slight difference in the game as it dropped fewer frames on average. A much bigger difference was the noise. Now that the fans don't ramp up to 100% to prevent the GPU from deleting itself. Back to your PC. Whatever is read in hardware info, you will have to figure it out yourself, ask friends, family or the people in the PC gaming server. This may not be an easy, fast or even cheap fix. But if you ever had issues in Path of Exile 2 or in general with your PC, this might have been the cause. Think of it like this. If you drive a car and you have obviously bad tires that make you slide more than they roll, is it really an issue of the bad road you're driving on? If you fixed whatever popped up in hardware info, I recommend going back to Path of Exile 2 and playing some more. If crashes are still happening or your entire PC freezes, we can do some more updating. It's time for some GPU drivers. There are two options. If you want to make sure you won't have any GPU driver issues, use Display Driver Uninstaller also called DDU. It's a bit more involved but way less than a BIOS update. I will leave a link down below on a guide on how to use DDU properly. But keep in mind any driver setting that relates to your GPU 
will be removed. If you want the non-perfect but easier solution, visit your GPU chip maker website, which is most likely AMD or Nvidia. Download the newest driver for it and select the clean install checkbox before continuing. After all these updates and probably way too many restarts, play the game a bit more and see if your issue is finally fixed. But if it's not fixed because your PC just turns itself off in the middle of a game, then you might have a more severe issue with your PC. We might be talking about a plain and simple black screen. Let's go down the checklist. You do not have temperature issues because you checked that earlier, right? It's also not the power cable that goes from the wall to your power supply or laptop, which is hopefully the original power cable from the power supply manufacturer, right? And it's also not a cheap power strip with 12 things plugged in, including your main gaming rig. Right? You are also not mixing two different RAM sticks from two different brands with different speeds of megahertz. Right? Then it might be the cables in your PC that aren't damaged externally, but internally. I've never had that happen to me, but it could happen. You can order new cables from your power supply manufacturer. As a warning, do not, under any circumstances, mix and match cables from different power supplies. Please, for the love of Atsiri, this is still a Path of Excel video, don't forget. And lastly, it might just be time to throw that power supply away and get a new one. It's the heart of your PC and delivers power to all your components every single second. Do not cheap out on it. Please. If you had issues while playing Path of Exile 2 and they finally went away, you can tap yourself on the back for fixing it. Good job. I understand troubleshooting takes a lot of energy and it's sometimes very frustrating. If it's still not fixed, then this goes beyond this video right now. I would recommend bringing it to a PC technician, which sadly will cost you money. Up to this point, you have checked the hardware in your PC, like cables, removed the dust from the stone ages, updated your BIOS, as well as various drivers, and potentially fixed major issues you noticed thanks to hardware info. Now you have a PC that actually works and doesn't crash. It's finally time to do some driver optimization and then actually do something in Path of Exile 2. I have an Nvidia GPU and use the Nvidia app, because Jensen doesn't have enough fancy jackets yet. I can only help you setting up your global drivers in that app, but if you use an AMD GPU, I will leave a link down below so you aren't left out. But in general, there aren't many settings that vary here. First, in the NVIDIA app global settings, you should set your max frame rate to whatever your monitor is and about 1 to 3 FPS less. For example, if you use a 60Hz monitor, choose 59 as your maximum frame rate. I had a 144Hz monitor before, so I set it to 141. The reason for all that is math. Second, power management mode can be set to prefer maximum performance. This is probably a minor improvement that you might not even notice, because your GPU also has a BIOS and it somewhat regulates how far it can overclock itself. There's also a thermal limit built in, which is another safety measure. Third, if your monitor has G-Sync or FreeSync, it should always be enabled both on your monitor and in the global settings. And lastly, have V-Sync turned on. Let's finally go over the in-game settings of Path of Exile 2. I would recommend following along and turning the game on. 
in the game, feel free to stay in town, press F1 once to see information about your FPS, CPU, GPU and more. If you are unsure what settings do, just turn them on or off. It may feel a bit like trial and error getting the most out of your hardware, depending on if you have a CPU or GPU bottleneck. More on that a bit later. In Path of Exile 2, I use the Vulkan renderer. It crashes less often than DX12 for me. If you used DX12 so far and had no major issues, you don't need to change it. But feel free to experiment with Vulkan for a day or two. If you are struggling with low FPS, experiment with upscale methods like NIS, DLSS or FSR. I can't tell you what looks good or bad for you because it's very subjective. I had NIS enabled, then lowered my render resolution down to 77% and had sharpness at around 20%. Afterwards, I barely noticed that it wasn't really 4K, but I got about 20 more FPS, which is a nice trade-off on a higher hertz monitor. Currently, I'm using DLSS quality at 50% sharpness, which is fine, but can sometimes look a bit blurry. I'm sure this is going to be improved over time. You could also turn off global illumination, which makes the game look really flat and boring. The game looks amazing because of lighting, but if you are struggling with FPS, experiment turning that off. Additionally, I do not recommend dynamic resolution because it just looks bad. This is incredibly subjective, but objectively, the effects on screen are less visible because there are less pixels available to display them. Thus, the game plays worse and you might die more often. Dynamic culling is also right now in January 2025 pretty darn bad. I would also leave that turned off. Lastly, please leave multi-threading turned on. You most likely have multiple cores and multiple threads on your CPU. The driver that you hopefully installed earlier helps Windows to use those cores and threads to spread the load evenly or do whatever it is meant to do. As the last topic in this enormous video, you most likely heard the term bottleneck. To keep it short, you will always have a bottleneck in your system. It's either the CPU, RAM or GPU. With SSDs being fairly common nowadays, it probably won't be that, but could also be the case. Why is something always a bottleneck? Here are two scenarios. You bought the recently revealed RTX 5090 GPU and spent more than I paid for my first car. You play the game, have hardware info open in the background and realize your GPU is only at around 50% usage. But your CPU is around 95 up to 100% usage. This is most likely a CPU and or RAM bottleneck. What if you bought the brand new AMD 9950X CPU? Suddenly, your GPU hits 100% in games, you have all the frames with ray tracing, multi-frame, whatever the heck, but now your CPU is only at 30% usage. This is a GPU bottleneck and, to be fair, that is exactly what you want. You always want your GPU to be the bottleneck, because it's meant to be used to display as much as possible on your screen. The GPU is meant to be used to give you all the frames or all the pretty visuals. But if your CPU would be the bottleneck, the fancy new GPU you have can't even be used to its fullest potential. Of course, there is always a give and take, either because you can't get certain hardware or plain and simple, money. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end. I hope this very nerdy video helped in some way. 
this was clearly a path of exile video obviously so if you want to see more of that subscribe and don't forget to stay hydrated gamers